Masking is an important technique for isolating parts of your image in Affinity Photo. In this video, I'll show you how luminance masks can make the process even easier and more precise. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and in this video we're going to be talking about luminosity range masks in Affinity Photo. Now this was added in version 2 of Affinity Photo, so just make sure you're on that edition of the software. Now, luminosity range masks are another way to isolate parts of our image. And you can think of luminosity as levels of brightness. So I'll start with this simple gradient demonstration to give you an idea of the concept. Now, behind the gradient here, I have a layer that I just made pure green. And I just did that so you can easily see when parts of it are transparent. I think that's easier to see than when it's white. Now, I'm going to assume you know how masks work in this video, but I'll just give you a brief little crash course again in case you need some refreshing. So I have my gradient selected here, and this is the layer I want to mask. So I'm going to click the Mask Layer button here. So I'll click that. And I have my mask. So if I select my brush over here, what I can do is paint on my mask. And if I paint on my mask with black, that erases. So this is what's happening here. If I paint with white, that puts content back in. And if I paint with some level of gray in between, it's kind of a level of semi-transparency based on the level of gray. And if I alt click on the mask, I can see what I've actually done on it. So this is what my mask actually looks like. I can click back on my gradient to see that in effect here. So if I want to get my mask to be clean again, I'll just paint it all white again. And now I can see my original gradient here. Now, what if we want to mask this gradient based on levels of brightness? Well, that's where we create the luminosity range mask. And we do that by right clicking on the mask layer button here. And you can see there's a bunch of options here. I'm actually making videos about all these options down here. So be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to be notified when they come out. But today we're talking about the luminosity range mask. So let's click that. So it created my luminosity range mask up here, but I can click and I can drag it into my gradient. And by default, it's not doing anything. So let's click on it. Now, the key to understanding this is to understand this graph in the middle here. What does it mean? Well, left to right is going to measure the darkness to brightness values in our image. So the left side is where the dark values are, and the right side is where the bright values are. Up and down is going to measure transparency. So at the bottom is full transparency, and at the top is completely solid. So our line is completely straight across the top now, which means it's just a completely solid mask. Now, you see, I can turn down the transparency of my image. I'll turn down the graph here. And this is fully transparent. I can do it at the 50% mark here. So this is 50% opacity about. That's the same thing as when the opacity slider is at 50% for our gradient here. And I can just click reset to get it back to the starting position again. So the big question is what happens when my curve is slanted like this, or even more complicated, something like that. Well, let me create a very drastic effect with this luminosity map to show you what's happening here. So if I can drag this down here, I'm gonna click linear, that'll give me sharp edges here. It'll be curved if I don't do that, but I'm just making it linear to show what happens. And now you can see the effect this graph is having on my gradient over here. So what's happening is that the darkest 25% of my image is having 0% opacity. And you can see that's exactly what's happening here. This bottom part of my image, this was the darkest 25%. I can toggle this off to see. That was the dark part. It's having 0% opacity, which means that it's showing the green below it. Let me reset this. I can make the top part transparent. So I'll drag this line down here. I'll make it very sudden up here again. I'll make it linear. I'll drag it down. So what this is saying is that anything in your image that's in that top 25% range of brightness, make it 0% opacity. And you could even do more complicated things. You can make the top and the bottom transparent. So I could drag the line like this. And now you see my darkest and lightest values are being completely suppressed to 0% opacity. Okay, so now let's look at a more complicated example. This image, of course, isn't a nice gradient. It's more complex with darks and brights interleaved within each other. So what if I want to make this dolphin here fully transparent? You can see it's basically the blackest part of my image. Well, let's add a luminous mask and see how we can do that. So once again, with my layer selected here, I'll right click on my mask option. And I'll choose luminosity range mask. So by default, nothing happens, but we know now how to isolate this dolphin here. So let me drag the dark parts down. I'll make the other parts higher. And I'll drag this down. Now you can see we've isolated the dolphin pretty well here. And of course, there's some of these extra parts here, but later on, we'll show you how you can get rid of those. Now we have these other options on the screen that can help us work with our mask a little bit more efficiently. One is the preview button. So if I click this, I can see what my mask is actually doing here. 
So as I adjust and change it, I can get a real-time preview of what's actually happening with my mask. Linear is the one I talked about before. If I have linear checked, these are going to be all straight lines. But if I uncheck linear, we're going to get more of a curve here. Sometimes the curved ones can be a little tricky to control. So usually I have this set to linear, but if you want smooth transitions, definitely you can try the curved way with linear unchecked. Invert is a nice option for just simply inverting the effect of our mask. So now we can have the opposite happening. Blur radius is going to help smooth out our image. So with the blur radius, I can increase it here. And if you notice, my mask is getting smoother there. So this is very good for softening the edges of your mask. Now, one thing we also have are these presets here. So for example, I can select shadows and it's automatically selected to this curve here. We can also do midtones, So that's what that curve looks like. Or we can do highlights, which is this one. We can also create our own presets here. So if I create something I really like, like this, I can say my preset. And if I'm doing something else, I can go back and I can select it again. And I can also delete it if I want to get rid of it. Now, one of the best things about luminosity masks is that they can be applied to adjustment layers. And this is really where their true power comes into play. So a common situation is to create a luminosity mask to isolate the sky and the ground. So let me do that here. I'll create a luminosity range mask. And I'll click preview. And I'll drag the slider around and get a good separation. So this here looks pretty good. It's basically like the highlight preset. So if I look at my image, you can see this is what's happening with the mask. I'll turn off this luminosity range mask for a second. And now I'll add a curves adjustment. So with my landscape selected here, I'll select the adjustments and let's select curves. Let's do something really extreme first, just so we can get some visible effect. So I'll do that. Now what I can do is I can take my luminosity range mask and actually apply it to the curves. So let me click it and I'll drag it onto there. And I can see it's underneath my curves here. Now I don't have it turned on. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Now this is with the luminosity mask applied to my curves. So let me adjust the curve so you can see what's actually happening. If I move the curve up and down, notice how only the sky is affected here. So I can actually make the sky darker. It's kind of a strange effect, but it shows you how it works. But the key point is that the effect was isolated to this top part. And the reason is that if we look at our luminosity mask, our curve is only affecting this white area up here. The black is being masked out. Now, one thing you can do to smooth out the transitions here is to use the blur effect on the luminosity range mask. So I'll click on that. Notice this part here is the edge of my mask. I can click the blur radius to make it a little bit smoother. Now, you want to be careful because if you go too far, you start getting a halo effect like that. Sometimes it's a little hard to avoid and you need to use other methods to clean it up. But for now, I think that's good. You can just do a slight blur. Now the luminosity mask can also be manually modified. So if I alt click on it, you can see we still have some white areas in here. With my paintbrush, I can select fully black and I can paint out this part in here. So I can get true black down in my bottom half of my image here. If you've seen my video on blend options or are familiar with that concept, you might be having a sense of deja vu right now. Aren't these things basically the same? Well, there's definitely some overlap, but each one does a few unique things that the other one doesn't. To give you a brief review of what blend options are, if I have my layer selected here, this is the gear option up here. So if I click this, this graph on the left behaves almost exactly like the luminance mask. So I can reduce the blacks. I can just isolate parts of the image like that. So I'm just showing you this as an extreme effect, but this is what we've been looking at with the luminance masks. So they do share some of these common features. But if we look at their interfaces, we can see some unique features between them. So for example, this is the luminosity range mask tool we've been looking at. You can see it enables us to set presets. It gives us a better ability to preview our output and also allows us to invert with one click. In addition, we have the option to blur the effect here. Now in terms of the blend options, it also lets you choose what channel you want to edit. So that's another feature it has. There's also an entire other tool on the right, which allows you to blend based on the value of the layers below it. Now, I won't go into that topic in this video, but it is a handy feature sometimes when you want to blend based on something that's below your image. For example, if you have something bright underneath your image and you want it to shine through, this is the kind of tool you could use for that. Now, in terms of luminance range masks, I think it's easier to see when it's being applied to your image. Just by looking at our layer stack here, we don't really know if a blend option is being applied or not. So I prefer this way a little bit more. You're free to use which one you're more comfortable with, but overall, I think luminosity range masks are definitely more flexible. Now, the other masking options we have here are compound mask, hue range mask, and bandpass mask. I'll be releasing videos on these topics shortly, so be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to learn how they work. And of course, if you have any questions about luminosity masks, feel free to leave a comment below. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.